Well, back at New Britain Stadium, the Rock Cats and Navigators scoreless as we move to the second inning, Dan. You know, Jeff, I can remember as a kid going to Yankee Stadium and being thrilled when I heard public address announcer Bob Shepard say, now betting number 25, That's Joe good. Very good. Pepitone. That's Joe. very good. You know, Bob Shepard's going to be leaving pretty soon. I think you can take his job. Hey, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, how you doing? Everything is fine. I love coming out to the ballpark. I'm still with the Yankees. Uh, George, I've been with George now for 12 years. I just stay away from him. So, you know, you not let him know I'm really working. <laughs> well, you and Joe Torre know the secret to working with George. Yeah, just don't go near him. I think we're old enough to know that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great ballpark here. I love it. Nice ballpark. Nice background. Juan Rincon back on the hill for the Rock Cats. New Britain leaves two on first inning, and he takes one low. This Marcus Timms, one and nothing. Joe, was your first season with the Yankees 1962? 1962, I came up, yeah. Right out of Amarillo, Texas, double A ball. Yeah. And, of course, uh, those were the great Yankee years, right? Well, you have Mantle, Maris, Tom Trash, guys like that, Hector Lopez, Bob Surrey, Roger Maris. It's, uh, it's nice coming up to a ball club like that where you can sit back and relax a little bit, not worry about you hitting too much. 299 hitter is Timms, who stands in, waves the bat across home plate. Into the wind goes Rincon. The pitch on the way, swung on, hit high in the air towards deep left field, moving back towards the warning track, back near the wall, and it's gone. A solo home run by Marcus Timms, and the Norwich Navigators take a 1 0 lead here in the second inning. Center field is smashing his 23rd home run. He'll pick up his 69th RBI, and the visiting team strikes a run here in the second. Joe, this fella is one of the Yankees' top prospects. Uh, I'll tell you what, the way that ball jumped off the bat then, he should be. I think you can use him right now out there. That's the 100th home run of the season hit by the Navigators, by the way, who lead it 1 to nothing. Joe, really, uh, you came up when the Yankees had th those great players. Uh, how much of an influence were they on you in that, uh, well, you, you know, know, they won championships? 1962, when I came up, of course, I, I played right field, center field, a little... Picked up Moose Cowan at first base, but sit down on the bench watching these guys perform. Uh, <laughs> you just couldn't believe that you were there. The guys that I saw in high school, and uh, Mantle out there, and then next thing I know, Mantle, I'm playing right field, Mickey's playing center. So uh, uh, the influence was there, and it just made me uh, a better ball player being a, a Yankee. John Rodriguez takes his strike. He's behind in the count, nothing in one. Run cone deal, swing and a miss, and the count, nothing in two. What about uh, playing under Ralph Hawk? What was that like? Well, Ralph was like a, a father image to me. When I came up, uh, my father had just passed away, and, and Ralph really took the, put the reins on me. And I, he kept me in line a lot. I like to go out every now and then. You know, <laughs> Ralph would be waiting by my door at night. And little fines <laughs> calmed me down right away because I couldn't afford it. What Next one is $150 a week, I think. <laughs> <or something. laughs> Next one outside the count, one and two to the Navigators left fielder Rodriguez, who's batting at 294. What do you think about the money today's ball players get? I don't like to think about that <laughs> too much. Well, it's something else. You know, I, I think that, you know, we started that. We were making more money than the guys before us. And There's another drive hit high and deep to right. Ford back, way back, and it's gone. Second home run consecutively for the Norwich Navigators as John Rodriguez bangs out his 16th, and Norwich on top 2 nothing. This is incredible. I don't think I've seen back-to-back -back home runs against New Britain all year long. We get a Bronx bomber in the booth, and the Yankees farm team hits back-to-back home -back Well, homers. actually, I had them in batting practice just before the game. <laughs> I told them exactly what they were doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. But uh, a great power display by Norwich. Did you once hit two home runs in one inning? My rookie year, yeah. Two, yeah and, uh, the only other guy that did that on the Yankees at that time was Joe DiMaggio, so I felt a good company then. But I didn't even know it. I was up twice in the inning, hit two home runs. And also, my roommate, Tom Tresh, came up to me and said, Joe, you just tied uh, the record. DiMaggio did. So it was a good feeling. You know, it was a great feeling. And you hit your share of home runs. Well, I played Well, I played 11 years. I hit 200, close to 250 home runs, so that's not too bad. No, not bad at all. Donnie Leon is a left-handed hitter of the DH at the play. Juan Rincon looking in for the sign from Gabby Torres. Here's the pitch on the way. Swung on, come back right to the mound. Speared by Rincon, first base side of the hill. He turns towards first, throws out Leon 1-3. And one down here in the second inning. Joe, talk about your fielding because you were a two-time Gold Glove winner at first base. You know, I came up in my minor league uh, career. I was a center fielder. When I came up, they put me in first base. And I did my second year at first base. I won a Gold Glove. So uh, it, it just came easy to me. And in high school, I played a, a lot of stickball. I played first base. I knew how to move around the base and all that. So I, it helped me coming up in the streets of New York, you know. 
I've heard other players say that too, playing stickball helped them. Well, it did with me. I, I think it developed a, a short, quick swing with me, and uh, that's what I was known for was a short, quick swing, and I, and I still like that type of swing today. Today, the kids have a tendency to a little longer swing. Pitch is swung on ground, back to the modern cone, dives for makes the play, get to his feet, throws on log, and so after giving up back-to-back -back home runs, he makes a couple of assists to help out his cause and quickly two away here in the second. Unfortunately, you were also with the Yankees during a, a down period. What kind of an adjustment was that? Well, I'll tell you what. I came up in 62. We won a championship. 63, we won the American League championship. 64, we won a championship with Yogi. Uh, after that, it was all downhill. Uh, two years later, we were in last place. And it, it was, it was uh, they traded a lot of the players that I played with and started with. And uh, there was a lot of new faces. And uh, it was it was kind of tough. And I think in 69, uh, I led that club in home runs that year, and I was traded that year. I think they were, I think it was about time for me to go somewhere else. Not Houston, but I'll tell you that. I didn't want to go there. 1-0 pitch is outside low. 2-0 the count to Navigator's backstop, Julio Mascara, who's just batting at 229. I would think it's tough because playing at Yankee Stadium was the place everyone wanted to play, right? Well, when I came up, I, I used to hit the ball to all fields. And when I got there, Wally Moses. There's another deep drive. Left field, more back, looking up, and it's gone. Third home run off one Rincon this inning for the Norwich Navigators. All three shots solo. And the visiting club on top, 3-0. Can I tell you I worked with that kid too before the game? <laughs> I can't believe this. You're in the booth, and they've hit three home runs. You know, Stump Merrill, who manages that club there, was a very good friend. I was uh, his hitting instructor in Nashville, Tennessee. When we had Don Manley on the club then and a bunch of good guys that came up with the Yankees. Uh, Ed Stump is one of the greatest guys in the Yankee organization. They love him there, and uh, I wish him all the luck, and I think I gave him a little today, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I guess so. Torres Oliveira is the number nine hitter at the plate. He's the sixth Navigators batter to step in against Rincon here in the second inning. Roddy winds and fires. There's a pop-up. This second inning finally may come to an end. It will be playable on the infield. Who's going to get it? The shortstop Stevens makes the catch. Three feet behind the mound, brings it in, and the shot is retired. But the Navigators in the second inning make some noise. Three runs on three solo home runs. We played an inning and a half from New Britain Stadium. No, it's three. New Britain nothing on the Buckley Radio Network.